Hello and a very warm welcome to this Hive 2 tutorial series. In this ninth episode, I talk about the effect sections or section and uh, where they are and what you can do with it. But uh, let's get started. So this is um, Hive again and let's put it in a really good uh, view like this one so you can see everything really clear. Um, I put a sawtooth again with a little bit filter on it so it doesn't hurt the, uh, the ears too much. And over here is the FX section you can turn it off or turn it on like you want that. And in the FX section, there is in the middle, there are all the effects and uh, you can click on it to turn it on like uh, this. And you can click on them again like this to turn it off again. And what you can do is you can just um, place it on a different um, order on this whole section. So the sound goes from the top to the bottom and um, if you like to have the distortion at the end or at the beginning you just put that somewhere where you want. Normally all settings are on the side on the left or on the right side as you can see like this and the delay is on the bottom. So let's start with the distortion. Distortion has some Styles like the mix dial, where you can just dial in the distortion you want to have, and at the moment you doesn't, you don't hear anything because the amount is not, not really dialed in. And as soon as I dial the amount of the distortion in here, you hear it's distorting. And with the tone. I can dial in like a slew, so the distortion is more reactive um, and it produces more um, high frequency. And if it's a little bit slower, it produces just a low frequency. Depends on which uh, timbre you want to have. And for sure the mix is original and distorted signal. And over here, where you can read soft clip, when you click on that, you have different options like soft clip, hard clip, fold back, and corrode. And if you dial through this with a little amount of uh, distortion, and with corrode, the the dials are changing to something different because corrode is like a bit crusher or it's a bit crusher and you can hear that when you dial in. Like this. This is reducing the sample rate. This is breaking everything. Like this. Uh, but you can just break everything and mix it in your original signal. So. Okay. <laughs> this is the dist <coughs> this distortion and now let's come to the chorus <coughs> I'm sorry and the um, chorus is um, an effect that divides the signal into path and um, then shifts one signal in time uh, like uh, 5 to 30 milliseconds and uh, slightly in pitch so if you dial in a chorus effect it's like like a chorus like people are singing if you're singing alone this is your voice but it always uh, sounds fuller if there's uh, a lot of people singing and this is they are not si really singing 
completely in sync or not on the same pitch is always a little bit different and that's the chorus effect if you want to make something sound more full and more and more more um, you use a chorus effect and here you have the um, dry wet so this is the original signal and this is the wet signal this sounds fuller and more stereo And the rate is the um, frequency of um, of an LFO, let's say, that shifts the delay and the pitch a little bit. And the depth is the amplitude, how much it is shifted. So if I put the depth on zero, the rate has no, can do nothing. And as soon as I um, shift the depth, It's like the depth is like the amount of how much the um, the rate takes place and the rate for sure. Is the speed. Okay, and over here where you can read classic, if you click on that, there are three different, let's say, um, basic presets. The one is classic that we heard, then there's a traumatic, and then there's an ensemble. And I switch between those. The chorus effect then you have the reverb reverb you know um, you know all and there are some yeah settings that are very interesting <clears throat> so start with the mix dry mix knob so 50 percent is um, the original signal 50 percent and the wet signals 50 50 percent so i put it like a little bit less than 50 percent then you have a pre-delay and the pre-delay is nothing else that the original when you play the original signal it uh, um, adds a little delay before the um, effect signal before you hear the effect signal It's always important when you um, play with effects that you get the nature of those effects. So um, that's why I'm sometimes playing long notes like on the chorus on distortion. And right now I'm playing short notes on a reverb or on a delay or something. Because if I hold the note, I can hear the reverb when I lift my finger off the note. So when I release the note. So now I'm playing with impulses so you can hear, for example, the pre-delay far more better instead of holding the note. You can hear that when you when you know wh where to listen on, but it's but it's um, hard to hear. So I'll make your life life easy, <laughs> easy, easy, and always think about what effect are you using right now and what is the best way to listen to it to hear it. And some everything with delay is just give an impulse and listen to what the effect is doing. If you just holding down the, the key, um, it's really hard to, to hear the effect that comes in your original signal um, additionally. So 
Okay, so this is the pre-delay. Then there is the size, this is the room size. Like a plate reverb. Then there's the decay, and the decay is something like a, in a normal envelope where uh, the, in this case, the reverb signal has a maximum, and then it needs decay time to fade away. If the decay time is very short, it's like that. If it's very long, it's like that. And if you put it like that, it's nearly infinity. If you have time, we'll wait until it's completely fade out. Maybe I could get a drink or something to eat and come back in an hour or so. No. Okay. So this is the decay time. Then we have a damp, and the damp, uh, yeah, damps the signal. Wait, I put that over here, and now listen to that. It's like it's it's cutting off the high frequency more and more and get to a low frequency and damping it out. Maybe you could say this is a volume fade and this is a filter fade sweep. Okay. The tone is... Um, um, well like a filter because this is the original signal so you only get the lower frequencies or you go on the other direction you only get the high frequencies or something in between like this for example the width is the stereo width, so you can have a mono reverb or you have a very wide stereo reverb like this. And we already talked about the mix. Okay, let's go to the phaser. So the phaser is something different than a chorus. And uh, I, I say that because there is an option flanged. And flanger and chorus are normally or, or nearly the same, except that the flanger has a, um, a shorter delay time than a chorus. So the chorus had about 5 to 30 milliseconds in delay time, and the fl uh, flanger normally have uh, 1 to 5 milliseconds delay time. So as a main difference between flanger and chorus. And phasers uses um, all pass filters, they are shifting them around. And this phaser has as well an option flange the whole sequence additionally. So we'll go through the, the phaser first and then show you how the flanger or the flange, flanged option sounds. So we have here the dry wet signal. We only use the wet signal because it's most obvious to, to hear. Then we have the rate. This is the speed of the LFO doing something. And we have the feedback that is feeding back the phaser. So let's start here. <laughs> Then feeding back the own signal, I start with feedback like that, and now I start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Okay, <laughs> I hope your ears are not bleeding. Okay, but it's important to to uh, listen to those effects if you don't know them really good. Um, that um, a lot of different settings can produce different sounds. So and then there is a stereo. Okay, and then we have um, a phasing, a uh, phase shifter, if you like that, uh, where you can shift the phase of the phaser. It sounds um, complicated, but here you can delay the phasing effect a little bit or speed it up in this range. So let me use that so I have the full control over it. <laughs> So I'm slowing it down right now. And it works. Speeding up, slowing down, speeding up. Maybe you could hear that if I if the that the um, effect wanted to continue, but dialing back the phase is just like holding the filter on the same um, on the same position until I reach the end of the phase here <laughs> and then it could move um, uh, move further in uh, <laughs> on its way so it's just like yeah, slowing down the LFO that moves the phase around could be very interesting to modulate that and now um, we use the flanged option. I, um, I dial down the f uh, feedback for that and the rain, uh, the the rate a little bit. So, or maybe a little bit like that. So here the phaser, and now I dial in the flange. something like that so that's the phaser <laughs> i'm sorry um this is so fun um okay and this is the uh, eq it's a um, three band iq eq not iq iq is something i need when i try to uh, spell eq okay and um this is just the um, frequency um, row and this is the gain row so you can dial in the frequency you want to change for the low frequency mid and high frequency and um, i put that right now in a smaller version like this here is the iq and eq it's the eq it's still the eq and here's the spectrum so you see the sound over here and now if i um, gain the lower frequency or attenuate the lower frequency as well with the mid and high frequency you can see that in the spectrum over here so simple eq I don't know why I want to always to say IQ um, because I, I'm in need of it. I don't know. 
Um, and this is a simple EQ. So, and now we are coming to the compressor. On the compressor, maybe you know compressors. Compressor is something that reduces the dynamic of a sound, or yeah, of a sound. So everything um, narrows from loud to silent or soft, from loud to soft or soft to loud. So if you have, for example, a preset that has very soft, uh, very silent voices in it and very loud voices in it, and you want to use it on a track, then you always have uh, the problem that your track maybe will um, be too loud for your soft notes in here. So you need a compressor. You could use a compressor in your track to achieve that, but you can use this compressor on um, Hive itself. So I use that with a reverb, reverb, I like this, for example. Maybe turn down the volume a little bit. Now I can I'll turn down the volume a little bit. So this is the this is the delay. like this for example and um, i want to um, raise the reverb tail a little bit so i um, use the um, compressor turn it on and the mount says how much i want to compress the signal The signal itself um, gets louder, so the original signal gets louder as well because I reduce the dynamics of the original signal as well. So it tries to make it as loud as possible as far as I uh, turn up the amount of the compressor. So, and uh, to make it not that very loud, I can just dial in uh, or uh, just attenuate it with the out dial. So it can make it a little bit more silent, more softer. And as you can hear, the original signal and the reverb tail are now really similar. The reverb tail fades out by nature, so it won't uh, turn that up all again. But um, the reverb, uh, the start of the reverb tail is as loud as the original signal. And then for sure you can um, use the envelope, the attack and the release. So if you don't have any um, transients, you can use a very fast attack. So the compressor will work very fast. So, so it turns down the, the loud part and um, gains the quieter parts and with the release you, you can just go in this direction so as soon the compressor um, turns down the volume the um, reverb tail will be quieter as well and trying to um, raise the volume after the release of the compressor and if I put the release very um, quick the compressor turns up the volume again so that the reverb tail will be louder or you put it like that As you can hear, is the longer the release is, the, uh, the quieter the signal will be because the compressor is ducking down the volume. Immediately, 
and it needs a lot of time to come back to its original uh, volume. <coughs> So that's the compressor. So always remember that uh, you might need it when you're using presets or your own sounds in a track where you have too much dynamics. So and then the delay and the delay um, it has different options like a stereo, ping pong and pong ping delay. This is um, a stereo is a normal stereo delay, standard stereo delay. And then you have the ping pong with the left or is it left um, left side first and the right side and so on? And the Pong Ping is right side first and left side uh, second and vice versa um, when using the uh, feedback knob. So, but because <laughs> this is stereo delay and we and we can configure on here like uh, a quarter and uh, three sixteenths or dotted eighth. We um, we um, have different rhythmic results when using all these uh, three different modes. So I, I turn up the um, feedback. So you have this on the left side, the first reflection or the first delay or echo, and on the right, the second echo a little bit later, like a sixteenth later. And this results in different, wait, I just play this one again and then switch to the ping pong. I like this one. Then you have for sure a low pass filter. taking away the high frequencies and the high pass filter taking away the low frequency then you have uh, the width so the stereo whiteness this is mono and this is ultra white <laughs> ultra stereo then the feedback I already talked about that this is just uh, repetitions of the um, echoes So this is forever and maybe getting more does it hold I don't know it's, I think it's not gaining no and the diffuse is something um, here you get a clear echo back and diffusing is like blurring it a fogging fogging the echo It gets a little bit undefined. Uh, maybe wait. Let's do it like that. Take away the fuse, the feedback back. Like this. And then. It's mixing it a little bit up because the feedback is um, feedbacking then the diffuse or the original signal back, so it's a little bit uh, difficult to show at the to show that at the same time. But um, yeah, I think you get the the principles of that diffusion. Maybe you know that already from reverbs. Some reverbs have those diffusions. And yeah, that's all about the effects for the um, Hive 2, the effect section. And always remember you can sort this in another order, how you like that, or you're just curious what happens if you do like wild re reordering everything. And um, yeah, the FX preset section is here. You can copy all your values and put it somewhere else in the in uh, another hive you can save your settings over here like um like here maybe you use the same um name conventions with numbers i don't know maybe start with 100 i something like that or you can load um 
um, already a factory preset or you just can initialize everything so everything is set to zero or to the default settings and start over again dialing in everything because you messed up everything and you don't know how to come back so just take the init and you're good to go again from the start so that's everything i would like to ask you something because that helps me very much and i always um, like to hear from you in the comments maybe you have some great ideas how to use the effect sections or maybe you have some good resources how to use these this or the other effect like i don't know the chorus or phaser or comp or you have some light night uh, night <laughs> nice uh, little tricks um, to just um, get some really astonishing results i would love to hear from that like subscribe and share the videos that helps me very much if you like me you would do that <laughs> and uh, yeah I hope I see you soon again in the next videos or some other videos and stay healthy see you ciao ciao